My name is Eagle Woman. I am um, my tribes. I'm a Mandan Hiradza on my dad's side, and I'm a Rikara on my mom's side. And we um, now live in North Dakota, in the United States, uh, on a reservation called Fort Berthold. So that's where the government of the U.S. put us in 1860. Uh, but a lot of people don't know about my tribes is um, that we were not um, the romanticized version that you often see in Western movies with teepees and people chasing down buffalo. <laughs> uh, that was more of um, the, the Sioux nations. And I would say our brothers, but back in the day we were pretty much enemies <laughs> with each other because we were um, more, um, we were farming tribes. We grew corn, squash, beans. Tobacco. Oh, we lived along the Missouri River for ever, <laughs> along the waterways, and we would trade with the with the tribes that you often see as a romanticized version. We would trade more of our farming goods for more hides and more meat, and we had a really vast trading system in the Americas, especially the Mandan nations. Um, there's places in North Dakota where you can find shells from the ocean. And we're in the geographic center of North America, so we had a vast trading network <sighs> until smallpox, until colonization. And it was pretty devastating. <laughs> Here we go. Um, because it really just tore our people apart. We lived in earth lodges, like in dome lodges. And so when smallpox came, it was very contagious. And um, if you breathed in the air, you died. And so there was these whole villages where um, people would come to, and we, there would just be people, in a whole village, maybe 20,000 people, gone. They were there, but they were dead. And they were scarred horribly. And it's crazy to think about just transition in this modern context, because it's almost like we're going back <laughs> to how we already were living for thousands of years before colonization, we um, were self-sufficient. But we were put on the reservation and we were told how to live. And so we were very strong and resilient people. And we made it work. We formed communities, we formed villages, we eventually had roads, we had a hospital. We had um, ways to take care of ourselves and we were very um, much in tune with ourselves and we didn't rely on cash at all. We did not get forced into a cash economy until the 1940s. That's when a dam was built on the Missouri River, a series of dams that forced us then to move from the bottomlands and we couldn't farm anymore. It took away our agriculture. They flooded, the, the United States government flooded all of our class one and class two agricultural lands and forced us to go onto the top, the highlands where the winds blow, so it's dry, it's crusty, it's hard to grow up there. They told us that we had to become ranchers, that we had to learn how to take care of cattle. And so now we have a lot of cowboys. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of people in my nations that are, that, you know, go to rodeos and they grow up as ranchers and cattlemen because we were forced into that. We have a, river, a lake now called Lake Sakakawea. That's the reservoir that was built on the Missouri River. And it's kind of interesting to be in a movement today where outside I walked in and somebody, I think it was PETA, handed me a flyer talking about how if you eat me, it's your problem. I don't think they understand that we were once again forced by the federal government to become cattlemen. And now we're being told we're a part of the problem because we were put into that position, forced into a cash economy. And so for me, just transition in my own community in North Dakota has been actually sort of teaching our own people what it is, what it even means to be how we used to be because we're very, a lot of our people are very assimilated, very acculturated because my grandma, for example, was taken away and put into a boarding school system. That boarding school system taught her that it was bad to be native. It was bad to be Hiratsa. She was beat if she spoke her language. And so culturally, transitioning means going back to our roots, literally, learning our language, 
and in my case, trying to learn three languages. Because the government thought it was okay to put three separate tribes on one reservation, which is causing all kinds of problems. It's causing infighting. We have the Bakken Shale oil boom in North Dakota. Maybe who's heard of the Dakota Access Pipeline? The Dakota Access Pipeline, a lot of people don't connect where the oil's coming from. It comes from the Bakken which is right underneath Fort Berthold. So we're still fighting to keep it in the ground at the source. So we're teaching people that not only to keep it in the ground, but what are we going to do if we don't have this industry? Because I have brothers and uncles and cousins that work in the industry. That's their job. But why is it that we're forced into a job becoming our livelihood? That's what colonization has taken away from us, is literally our livelihoods, and makes us think that that job, that nine to five, is what is our reality. It's a false reality that's been put onto us by a capitalistic model. And so we need to take back our power away from money. Why would we need to go to that job and do that hustle and be away from our kids if we could just walk out and, and be in our garden like we used to? Whole communities would garden and farm together. It was predominantly a woman's job, but the men helped. And then we would feed ourselves. That was the day. That was our livelihood. And so for me, just transition just isn't about green jobs. It's about getting back what we had culturally and importance of our family. It's sick in the U.S. It's sickening that people in the U.S. leave to go to other countries to slow down, to have a different pace of life because it's competitive. I was in New York City and I heard these people arguing with each other about, oh, I clocked in 12 hours today. Oh, I put in 14. And it was like they were proud of that. Being, they were away from their families all day long because that's the false reality that we've been given. And so, working really hard to decolonize our minds in our own communities and to get people to understand that when I want to shut down the Bakken in North Dakota, it doesn't mean I want to take people's jobs. I don't want to take my family's jobs away. I want them to have alternative solutions. So we're working on things like hemp farms. We're working on things like small-scale wind and solar, not these large corporate farms that are still going to be a problem. They're bad, large, big wind farms. They're not good either. Each and every single home should have their own sustainability, and that's what we're working on, and we're building them. We build the solar panels. We build the wind turbines, not some company where you see these giant things being shipped because transportation then becomes a problem. It's hard. The work is so hard because at home, there is a divided conquer mentality. Well, who do you think you are? <laughs> it happens, and there's no romanticism. Not all Native people are stewards of the land. We don't all go out every day. My tribal leaders have been put into positions where they sell out because the government has said, we're going to take it from you, and they do. You better take this money or we're going to take it from you because they've been assimilated and they've been colonized. So part of this is decolonizing our own minds so we can get back to our culture, so we can get back. Just transition takes a long time. I'm going to do it. I have a four-year-old daughter, and I'm teaching her not where to shop, not the best grocery store. We're planting gardens. I'm teaching her, if that tap doesn't come on when you turn the tap water, where are you going to go to find water? Hmm, okay, bro. There's a tree. So those tree roots must go down to water. There must be water there. That's what we need to teach our kids. Show them where the turnips are. The ground berries, the choke cherries, the June berries. Everybody's going to be different. Wherever you are in Germany, whatever wild foods you have here, that's what you need to be teaching people, how to be self-sustainable. That's just transition to me. So, Mati Gerats, thank you.